Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the Technology Firm. In this session, we will be observing the impact of packet delay and packet loss. Uh, one of the goals for this specific scenario is to find out which of the two evils affects you the most. And I want you to pay attention to the methodology and the tools used. So if you want to replicate this kind of stuff back at the office, uh, you can try to do that. I say try because you may or may not have a WAN or LAN emulator. Nevertheless, it's worth watching. Hope you enjoy it. So here's a little lab setup. And we've got ourselves a laptop down here, another laptop over here. He's connected one gig to the switch. Switch is 100 meg to my little Linktropy Mini. I always butcher that name. I hope I got that one right this time. A little LAN or WAN emulator. And you can set packet loss uh, and delay and stuff like that. So you can see I got LAN B plugged into here, 100 meg. LAN A plugged into here with 100 meg. And of course, this laptop is set for 100 meg. So the big thing we're going to do to easily test this, just use good old iPerf. He's going to be the client, iPerf-C. Churchill is the server. Dash R means we're going to get reverse direction, it means we get an upload and a download. The first test is an up, second test is a down. And then we also run this iperf-c churchill-u, which is a UDP test, and that will give us jitter and loss. Therefore, on the server, we run the iperf-s, which matches up with this first guy, and iperf-s-u which would be UDP. Now, honestly, you could run them both at the same time here, if you'd like, two instances within a command prompt, uh, or you could run them separately, uh, and that's fine as well. So that's what we're doing. We're running this iperf point to point from here to here, and we're going to change some settings in the Linktropy mini box. Let's see what we got. So the big reason why we're doing this is we, we got into a little debate with a customer about packet loss versus delay and they were trying to explain uh, one is um, less observable than the other, one is uh, better, the better of two evils if you will. And, and I said they're both awful and, and I suggested we set up this little lab to find out which of the two um, would actually be noticeable and that's the goal here. So we've got our, our LAN A to LAN B, we just set up for 10 meg just to keep things simple. Uh, because the customer has a 10 meg link to the remote site and we only put one millisecond that's all we did no packet loss and and I thought this would be our baseline right and 10 meg one millisecond delay and loss and that's 10 meg one I'm sorry one millisecond one way and obviously one millisecond back the other way and you can see out of 10 we got 9.54 up 9.52 down and you can see it's very 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 consistent uh, the variance is is almost not even worth mentioning. Jitter is kind of okay, right? So that's 0 0.820 milliseconds, 820 microseconds if you will. And loss is zero all the way down. So this is our baseline, we know everything's working all right, and now we know what all right means. Second thing we did, test number two, we changed our delay to 33 milliseconds, again from A to B and back B to A. So if, if you want to start doing some, I'm going to say basic linear math, you could say 66 milliseconds total. It really doesn't work out that way, but you know, it's something for you to put in your head. But the key here is that there's no packet loss, zero and zero. So all we did was play with the delay. That's all we did. And the results are 9.7 up, 9.2, 9.2, 9.2, 9.2. See that? Now again, that's pretty close, pretty good, pretty consistent. And down drops all the way to one. See that? Now, Mileage will vary depending on your application and the way it handles things, right? This is iPerf, so if I want to do this with a web server, I would do with HTTP or Microsoft SMB, right, and all that kind of stuff. But for now, this is just illustrating the point. And jitter, you can see jitters, again, not that much changed from before. And loss, right? So loss 9% all the way down the map, whereas before it was zero. This is where we start to talk about differences between jitter and delay. So delay obviously is going to be your round trip delay and jitter is going to be the time between the packets if you will, right? So this is this is important. This is when you start using your tools in these scenarios and see what they report as well. Now, test 3, we uh, put delay to 0. And this time we put 5% packet loss. Again, 5% up if you will and 5% down if you will. So again you want to try that linear math say 10 more or less and you'll find that it's not really 10 but again it just gives you something to frame in your brain. We've got up all of a sudden now is 4, 
well, 3.95, 3.9, 2.8. So this obviously is affected as well as download. And the loss goes up as well, and that's the 5%. So don't expect 10 all the way down. It doesn't really work that way, but again, it's just something for you to think about. And the jitter, uh, you can see the jitter similar to before. Last thing we did was we changed it to 10% up and 10% down. And now you can see things are pretty miserable, right? But again, the jitter didn't really change that much. And the loss got 19 down here and 9 and 13 up here. So that's it. So the point of the exercise is to make sure you set up the lab appropriately and then you can observe what packet loss or delay does to your specific application. Uh, and again, in my case, I use, let me just go back up to the top here. I use this uh, Apposite Link Trophy mini box, little appliance. People have got other ways of doing it as well, but uh, I just find this to be quite easy. So hope that helps. Maybe I'll do some other labs with some other applications and protocols, and then we can look at it in Wireshark and other tools. Have a good day. Bye for now.